G'day cocktail lovers, the shirt should be a giveaway. It's time for another concoction in the kitchen. Also something that is going to take uh, multiple days so you will see more than one shirt. I am making some Swedish punch, or actually, because it's spelled P-U-N-S-C-H and it's Swedish, I start channeling the Swedish chef because I watched the Muppets a lot when I was a kid. So I want to call it Swedish punch um, because I believe the Swedes are enormous fans of the Swedish chef. I believe they have no problems whatsoever with a Swedish chef. So while some people just refer to this as Swedish punch, I'm going to call it Swedish punch because that's just how we roll on Angry Cocktails. Uh, very much I was inspired ever since I saw Uncle Pete from Uncle Pete's Cocktail Shop make Swedish punch, I wanted to make some. Also, because I have Batavia Arak. What that is, that is essentially a rum and it comes from Indonesia. When Indonesia was a Dutch colony, the Dutch called it Batavia. And uh, I, I believe the base of this rum is uh, rice rather than sugar. So it's different to other rums, has its own character. And this to me, weirdly, uh, Batavia Arak is ridiculously difficult to get in Australia. And I say ridiculously difficult because Indonesia is just our most immediate neighbour to the north. It is just north of Australia, but it is ridiculously difficult to get Batavia Iraq. But I got some! This one is called By the Dutch. I think the reason it may be difficult to get Batavia Iraq in Australia is because it doesn't come directly from Indonesia. It's initially made in Indonesia and it's uh, aged and bottled in Holland. I think that might be the whole source of the problem. But anyway, I got one. This is uh, a key element in Swedish punch, which again, Uncle Pete made sound super good. So I decided I had to make some and I ended up waking, making so much because the measurements were in cups and I didn't really assess how much that was. And I made probably twice as much as I intended, but I'm going to give you a basic recipe. I'll, I'll say it in parts and I'll put a link in the description to uh, a recipe that says a whole thing and it tells you in cups. But if you follow in cups, you are going to end up with, well, I think the professional term is metric shit ton of Swedish punch. In simple terms, Swedish punch is two parts rum, one part Batavia Iraq, two parts spice tea, two parts sugar. So how I made it, I put in two cups of rum. I used a Bundaberg Black, a 12 year old age rum. Use whatever rum you like, but basically uh, it's two parts rum. I used two cups, which ended up being way too much. And then one part Batavia Iraq, uh, again, I used one cup, was way too much. When you make the tea syrup, you have a lot of room to play with. You can make what you want. You, you want to use like a black tea and make it 50-50 tea and sugar. Uh, Mrs. Angry happens to be a bit of a tea aficionado, so she has some very interesting teas. I mixed up some different teas and they had all sorts of flavors. There was cinnamon and cardamom and chai and vanilla and turmeric. So I, I had a really richly flavored collection of teas in the tea I made. But in terms of the other parts, you want uh, to get two parts tea. I made two cups of tea and then added two cups of sugar and dissolve the sugar into that to make a tea syrup. So you want that to cool down. So you make a tea syrup and put it aside to cool down. So with the rums and Batavia Iraq, two parts rum, one part Batavia Iraq, uh, you want to slice up two lemons. If the lemon has seeds, take the seeds out. You don't want the bitterness. I actually had a seedless lemon when I made it. And also, because no one can tell me what to do, and I just break all the rules, uh, I felt like adding some lime as well. So it was two lemons and one lime in my mix sliced up, covered with the rum. Two parts rum, one part Batavia Rock, and I left that for six hours. After six hours, I combined the rum mix with the sugar tea, super spicy, crazy syrup mix. And then you bottle that and you want to let that sit for at least 24 hours for the flavors to really permeate. And then you taste it. So in other words, I've done all that and I need to let it rest. And then I'm going to come back and I'll be wearing a different shirt when I taste it. It's tasting time. This is actually close to two days later. The recipes I saw for Swedish punch said after you make it and mix it, 
let it rest for 24 hours, and let all the flavors permeate. It's actually closer to two days, but here it is. I've made a big old bottle, so I better like it because I've made a lot of it. Uh, so I keep the old Starwood whiskey bottles because it has that nice Starburst paintings on it. So it looks cool. And time to have a little taste of our Swedish punch or punch as I've decided it should be called. Ooh, you're getting that gurgling ASMR. It's quite syrupy. It's quite thick, which is not surprising given the amount of uh, sugar that's in it. So instantly it's very aromatic. Just all the, the spices from the teas come through and it is unsurprisingly very sweet and the rums are coming through. Very late, it's a teeny bit bitter, which would be the tannins from the tea, I assume. But it is very nice. No wonder people like this. I feel like this might go really well with soda or lemonade, club soda as Americans call it. Uh, just as, because I think that would then make it a really bright, sparkly drink. Uh, it's quite nice as a liqueur. It is quite thick and rich uh, and Hmm, I can see why people have been into Swedish punch for so long, but I think I should make a cocktail with it. Here we are at the formal cocktail making part of the video and I have the Swedish punch ready. Now, I looked around, a lot of Swedish punch recipes involve rum and or lime and I've tasted a few of them and they're great, but I found one that's a little different and I wanted to try that. It's called the highfalutin and besides the Swedish punch, it has bourbon rather than rum, so we're going to try that out. But seeing I've got the Swedish punch ready, the first thing we're going to do is add 30 ml of Swedish punch. The recipe I found recommended using a bourbon here, that's just because they don't have access to high quality Australian whiskies or they recommend them. That's my story anyway, but yes, bourbon style whiskey, whatever takes your fancy that you can get a hold of wherever you are in the world. I'm probably going to use the last of my Starwood 40s here. This is a local whiskey, uh, 100 proof. You don't have to go for 100 proof, uh, 80 proof would be fine, but your choice, 45 mils of whiskey. The final ingredient was quite an obscure one, and I don't have it, but I think very few people would. It's called beer, burr, beer, burr, B Y R H H. I will put the actual recommended product in the description, but I looked it up, seeing as I don't have it and can't get it. And it's an aromatized wine, so it's in the Vermouth ballpark, but it has quinine in it. So I thought, oh, I know what I've got. I have Cochi Rosa, which has aromatized wine in it. And I'm going to split the measure 50 50 between the Cochi Rosa and Maiden Eyes Classic Vermouth. The recommended measure was 30 mils of aromatized wine, so I'm going to do 15 mils each of the Cochi Rosa and the Vermouth. Given this is an all booze cocktail, you're going to want to stir it for 30 seconds or maybe more, depending how much dilution you like. But after stirring, we strain that into a chilled coupe, drop in a twist of lemon. There we have our highfalutin. I like that. I, as I said, I have tasted this with some rum drinks as well. Me, and it's, poss it, it's always a toss up for me. Do I like rum more than bourbon, quite honestly? or rum more than whiskey, I should say, in this case. I think I'm coming down on the side of whiskey in here. Again, the rum ones didn't have vermouths in them, so this is kind of a weird cousin to a Manhattan, and I'm a fan. I hope you are too, and hey, maybe try your hand at making some Swedish punch. But whatever you do, I do hope you look after yourself, look after people around you. Until I see you again, I'll say cheers.